is there a proper human diet or can human beings just eat whatever they want and still expect good health? I think this is a very good question and a question we should all ask ourselves and ask our healthcare providers. It's my contention that there is a proper human diet that is going to lead to optimal health for humans, optimal health for you. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the 11 concepts of the proper human diet. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical practice. And this video is going to help you understand your proper human diet. The first concept I want to discuss is nutrient density. Now, the very act of eating should be all about nutrient intake. There are certain amino acids, there are certain fatty acids, there are certain vitamins and minerals that we cannot make that we must ingest or we will get sick, suffer, and ultimately die an early death. So eating should be all about harvesting these nutrients. And in order to do that as efficiently as possible and also without ingesting an unnecessary amount of carbohydrates, you should eat the most nutrient-dense food you can find. Now, if you read lots of articles out there in the mainstream media, you'll think that kale is the most nutrient-dense food on the planet, or some berry from uh, a Caribbean island, or spinach. You'll think these are the most nutrient-dense, and that's actually not true at all. You can put the nutrient listing side-by-side -side between kale and any form of meat, and the meat is going to win every time. The most nutrient-dense planet uh, foods on this planet are organ meats like liver. And so if you compare the nutrients contained in chicken liver to the nutrients contained in kale or spinach or any other quote-unquote superfood, you'll see that, that there is no more nutrient-dense food than liver. So a proper human diet should contain foods that are very nutrient dense. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat spinach and kale. I'm just saying don't be deluded into thinking they are the most nutrient dense. There is an absolute spectrum of nutrient density in the foods you eat. So a jelly donut would be very high in carbohydrates and sugar and completely devoid of any meaningful nutrition, aka nutrients. On the other end of that spectrum would be liver of some kind or some other organ meat that is completely rich in the amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals that your body needs for optimal function. The second concept I want you to understand is the carbohydrate knob. There are There is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. If you never ate another carbohydrate for the rest of your life, not only would you not die, but you would actually flourish and be very healthy and vigorous because there is no essential carbohydrate. There is no essential sugar. You don't need those at all. So the, your intake of carbohydrates is optional. And so I want you to think of your carbohydrate intake as the volume knob on your car radio. If you want to listen to the music louder, you turn up the volume. If you want to listen to it not as loud, you turn down the volume. This same concept applies to your carbohydrate intake. Now, when I talk about carbohydrates, I'm talking about total carbohydrates, not net carbohydrates. And so some of us do wonderful on 100 total grams of carbohydrate a day. We're still able to get all the nutrient-dense foods in. We don't gain fat. We don't get inflamed. We seem to do very well on that. Others of us have to turn down this knob to 50 total grams, some even more to 20 total grams. Some people like me have to turn down their carbohydrate intake knob as close to zero as they can get it before they discover their optimal health, before they discover their proper human diet. Please help me reach even more people and teach them about the proper human diet. Click that thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and click the little bell button right beside it. And definitely share this video with someone you love. The third concept I want you to understand about the proper human diet is the concept of food sensitivities. There are chemicals in some of the food we eat that can be quite inflammatory to certain parts of our body. In some people, these inflammatory uh, chemicals can actually flare up or create autoimmune conditions. And so I want you to be aware of these. Now, you may be someone who can eat uh, plants that contain these and it doesn't really bother you at all. And, and the, the main chemical toxins I'm talking about are oxalates, 
saponins, lectins, phytates, uh, and phytoestrogens. Some people, when they're young and healthy, they don't really seem to respond or react to these things. Other people find that, that even eating a little bit of these causes a big problem in their body. And this could be inflammation in their gut, in their skin, in their joints, or even in their their mental capacity, their brain. So if you have a if you're lactose intolerant or you have a gluten intolerance, you immediately get feedback from your body when you eat those chemical toxins in the food. And so you learn quickly to avoid those. Some of these other uh, chemical toxins are much more subtle in how your body responds or reacts to them. And so it can take some trial and error, a few months of uh, excluding this food, including this food, until you figure out which of these your body's really sensitive to. And then you'll know that those foods are not part of your proper human diet. The next concept is satiety. This is a sense of fullness a sense that you should be done eating. And this really is a, is a helpful concept for people who are obese or overweight, of wanting to lose fat, AKA lose weight. So food satiety is, uh, the satiety signals are caused by hormones in your body that go up or down as you eat and tell you, hey, that's enough, you're full, or no, no, you can't eat just one, you're still ravenous, eat the whole bag of chips, right? So there are foods that trigger these satiety hormones in the right direction and tell you that you're full when you have actually ingested enough meaningful nutrients from your nutrient-dense food. There are uh, other hormones, that other foods that will move these hormones in the wrong direction and tell you you're still hungry, even though you have eaten enough food. So when you take into consideration the nutrient density of your food, so if you're eating Doritos and drinking Pepsi, those are devoid of nutrients. And so you're, you're breaking concept number one. But also they're never going to tweak your hormones and give you the satiety signal that you're full, it's time to stop eating. And so in order not to overeat, and basically when we say that we mean overeat carbohydrates, you need a diet that's rich in proteins and rich in fats. And they need to be natural, ancestrally appropriate fats and proteins. We'll talk about the ancestral concept in a minute. But when you eat enough good ancestral fat and good ancestral protein, these move all of your hunger hormones in the right direction to tell you, hey, you've eaten enough. It's time to stop. And it's easy at that point to push away from the table and to go find something else fun to do besides continue eating. The proper human diet will do that for you. The next key concept of the proper human diet is fasting. Yeah, not eating is also part of the proper human diet. So you're already fasting every, uh, every day from anywhere from six to seven to eight hours while you're asleep, you're not eating. And so even if you start off with a 12 hour daily fast, so you add two hours on each end of your sleep window, now you're not eating for 12 hours a day. And that gives you uh, 12 hours to eat one meal or two meals or three meals in. And that is going to help you move all of your fat loss hormones in the right direction. The longer you don't eat, uh, AKA the longer you fast, the more these hormones move to the perfect position so that they can start to burn the stored fat on your body. Yeah, you know, the blubber, the, the, the adipose tissue, the fat. That's how you burn that off is by following all these concepts. And one of the concepts is you need to be doing some degree of a daily intermittent fast. Now you might start with 10 hours a day and that's all you can do. If you're still eating a high carbohydrate diet, it's almost impossible to fast longer than 10 or 12 hours. You will be starving to death, or at least that's how you'll feel. But as you eat more fat and eat more protein in your meals, trying to hunt for the nutrient density, then you're gonna notice that it, you don't get as ravenously hungry at every two hours or every four hours like you used to. And so you can gradually extend your fast out to 16 or maybe even 18 hours every day and it's effortless, it's easy. You actually will have more mental clarity and you'll be able to get lots more work done. You'll get to get lots more play done because you're not having to eat every two or every four hours. The next concept of a proper human diet is ancestral appropriateness. Now, what this means is that you want to focus the majority of your dietary effort on eating foods that human beings have eaten for our entire existence on this planet. And so that's going to be lots of fatty meat because uh, for our entire existence on this planet, 
The paleoanthropological evidence makes it very clear that we ate as much fatty meat, organs, bone marrow, brains. We ate as much of that as we could get our hands on. And then we might eat some plants for uh, seasoning or for medicinal purposes or to keep from starving to death. But the majority of a proper human diet comes from fatty meat. And that can be meat from the ocean in the form of seafood. That can be uh, meat from the pasture, red meat. That can be uh, meat from the hen house. It doesn't matter. It can be eggs. It can be cheese. Any of these things are very ancestrally appropriate for us. We've been eating them for the entirety of our time on this planet. Now, things that you should be cautious of or th are things that we've only been eating for a few thousand years, like uh, grains, uh, like alcohol, 4,000 years, grains, 12 to 15,000 years, like cheese, probably only a few thousand years we've been eating cheese. And that's why I think some people trying to do keto or carnivore do best when they leave the cheese out. It's not that that's a modern, highly processed food, but it, our bodies have not been exposed to that, for, but for only a, a few thousand years. The worst foods of all on this ancestral appropriateness uh, concept of the scale is foods that have only been around for a, a few decades, maybe a hundred years. And this is gonna include all the vegetable oils like cottonseed oil, canola oil, corn oil, soybean, sunflower, safflower. Human beings never ate these things ever. And also there have never been any long-term studies to prove that these factory made products are safe for long-term consumption in human beings. We actually don't know if it's safe. The studies have never been done. We just assumed that they were safe and we've been eating them. And our ingestion of these, these vegetable oils coincides very tightly with the obesity epidemic in modern society. So don't eat anything that's only been available for human beings to eat for a few decades. That hasn't been proven to be ancestrally appropriate. Avoid those things. The next concept of a proper human diet is to avoid things that are made in a factory and to avoid highly processed things. You want to eat one ingredient foods. You do not want to eat something that has 10 or 20 or 100 ingredients on the ingredients list. That's absolutely not ancestrally appropriate. That's factory made. That is a product, not food for human beings. And so the, many of the, uh, the keto approved baked goods, they're gonna have uh, almond flour or coconut flour or some other nut flour. And eating a few of these nuts is probably fine, but eating 50 of these nuts in the form of highly ground up processed flour is not ancestrally appropriate. And so again, you're taking what started as a natural food and you're highly processing it. That's probably gonna confuse those hormones we talked about earlier that are in charge of telling you when you've eaten enough and when you're full. And I think that's why many people on a ketogenic diet, if they're eating too many keto baked goods, too many keto shakes, too many keto cookies and pies, wind up eating too much and they wind up getting too many carbohydrates because they're not following this concept of a proper human diet. The next concept of a proper human diet is to make sure you're getting adequate mineral intake. Uh, it's pretty easy to know if you're getting enough protein and enough fat. Vitamins are a little less easy, but still, if you're eating the, the right foods, you know you're getting those vitamins because the, the foods actually make those vitamins. Minerals are another thing. Minerals are actually elements on the periodic table of the elements. Remember that big chart from high school chemistry? Those things are only made by nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. They are either in your food or they're not in your food. Uh, so you have to be very aware that many of the soils that our food grows on now and that our food grazes on now is a mineral depleted soil. That soil has been monocropped for decades or it's been overgrazed for decades and no one has uh, done the correct re regenerative restorative things with that soil to help it be a nutrient replete soil. And so it is deficient in many minerals. And that's why until we have returned to a regenerative farming model where we're not raping the landscape basically to, to, to get our food. That's why I recommend a mineral supplement like this guy right here, Keto Chow makes it and it's got all of the minerals 
in the right amounts that you're going to need on a daily basis. And so every cup of coffee, I put a little squirt of this in there. And when I'm uh, frying a steak, it, it, this tastes very salty. I'll put a little squirt on top of the steak and, and that gives it a salty flavor. But not only am I getting sodium and chloride, I'm also getting all the other electrolytes and all the other minerals that my body needs for optimal function. So don't forget about the minerals on your proper human diet. The next concept uh, for a proper human diet is not to fall for fad diets. Now, you may be thinking that the keto diets and, or the ketovore diet or the carnivore diet is a fad diet because that's what you hear on television and read magazines. Actually, what the keto, ketovore, low-carb, carnivore diets are are a rediscovery of the proper human diet. That's the way human beings have always eaten, and that's the way we should always eat. We should eat lots of fat and protein, and then a little bit of carbs, plus or minus the carbs. That is a proper human diet. And now the fad diet that I'm actually talking about is the current diet recommended by the American Diabetes Association. This is a fad diet. A bunch of uh, gray-haired old gentlemen got in a room and decided this is how diabetics should eat. There is no research that proves that this is the best diet for diabetics or any other human for that matter. There's no research proving that this diet is safe for long-term use in human beings. So why are we recommending it? Well, it's because it's a fad. It's been around for a few decades, and I predict over the next decade, this diet, along with the DASH diet, the Weight Watchers diet, the Jenny Craig diet, all these other fad diets, some of which have been around for 60 or 70 years, they're gonna die and go away because they're obviously not the proper human diet. They're, they do not give you optimal nutrition. There's no nutrient density in them. Uh, they're just trying to make money off of a fad diet. So if, when you see the federal government's My Plate guidelines, that is also a fad diet. It's not based on any research whatsoever. It's basically uh, a conglomeration of the opinions of the corporate farming businesses that are billion dollar corporations, some privately held that we have, uh, the public doesn't have any recourse against. They just decided we want to sell lots of grains and we want to sell lots of low fat dairy and we want to sell lots of, of this, that, and the other. So that's what we're going to say that people should eat. That's how the My Plate guidelines were formed. And if you don't believe that, I've got a chapter in my book, Lies My Doctor Told Me About How the Food Pyramid Was Formed. And the My Plate is just a bastard child of the food pyramid based on no meaningful nutritional science whatsoever. So don't fall for fad diets eat the proper human diet. The next concept of a proper human diet is recognizing and realizing and coming to grips with the fact that human beings can form an addiction to sugars. We can be addicted to carbohydrates, especially the simple carbohydrates, the highly processed carbohydrates, and actually the more processed carbohydrate is, the more habit forming it is. Now, people can quibble all day on whether sugar meets the criteria for the legal definition of addiction or not, but basically when a, a, a marketing firm brags that you can't eat just one, that's, that's evidence in my opinion that they tried to make that food as addictive as possible to get all of your money. So do not for a minute think that you can say no to crack cocaine and walk away after you're addicted to it, you're gonna to have to go to rehab. Don't think for a minute you can just stop drinking three pints of whiskey a day and just go cold turkey. No, you're not. You're gonna have withdrawals. You may need professional help to go through that. And there are many, many of us when we stop the carbohydrates or at least turn down that carbohydrate intake knob very low, we are going to have sugar withdrawals and we are going to have carbohydrate withdrawals. And that is gonna give you from three to 10 days of feeling miserable, of going through all the classic withdrawal symptoms of having a headache, of having nausea, of having mental fog, of just feeling like you're coming down with the flu. Those are signs of withdrawal. And that happens with sugar and simple carbohydrates, just like it happens with other addictive substances. Once you understand that, you don't, then you, you, it's quickly you realize, oh, I'm not just craving that donut or those chips. I, I'm having a withdrawal moment. I'm, I'm addicted to that, and it's calling to me. That, that junk food is my monkey on my back. Once you name it what it actually is, then you can fight it for what it actually is and you can defeat it for what it actually is. There is no addictive foods contained in the proper human diet.
The final concept I want you to understand about a, a proper human diet is that there is a spectrum of quality of food uh, from a very low priced food to a very high quality food. You're gonna always pay more for quality. We understand that, right? Now, if you value your life and the life of your friends and family and your loved ones, then you want them to have all of these concepts met when you put food on the table. And so if you're, if you're broke as a joke right now, like I used to be, then maybe all you can afford is the cheapest hot dogs in the store, the cheapest potted meat, spam, bologna. That's fine because that's a thousand times better for you than eating the Doritos or the honey bun or the jelly donut or drinking the Pepsi. Eat the cheapest meat that, that's in the store if that's all you can afford. But when you can afford to do better, then you should do better. And so you should start move up from the cheapest hot dogs in the store, start buying the 70-30 ground beef or minced beef. Uh, that's going to be better. That's a better quality meat. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Now, when you uh, can't afford even better, then you'll start getting grass-fed, grass-finished beef and you'll have a higher omega-3 content, a lower omega-6 content. There's no doubt those things are true. But in the beginning, if all you can afford is cheap hot dogs, then do this with cheap hot dogs. That, that's a temporary fix, a temporary cure, but it's infinitely better for your long-term health than eating the processed carbohydrates. So eat the best quality meat you can afford, but don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Don't think you can't do the proper human diet properly if you don't have the money to be able to afford uh, cows that have never been given an antibiotic or a steroid and have eaten grass their entire lives and were uh, slaughtered humanely. You will get there, I promise. There's always hope. Your, your financial system will improve, and in my experience, it improves directly as your health improves. And so the proper human diet is gonna help you in many, many ways. First and foremost, physically. Secondly, mentally. But when you're in optimal physical and mental shape, guess what? The financial situation becomes less difficult and less confusing. Family issues, social issues, all these things start to get better once you have cured your body and cured your mind of diseases that were caused by the previous factory-made product foods, pseudo-foods, frankenfoods that you used to live on. Those were actually contributing to the other problems in your life. I hope these concepts help you understand a proper human diet and to not be deluded or misled by advertising or by family members' opinions about what is or is not part of your proper human diet. The, when, once you understand these concepts, it's very difficult to fool you with advertising or with a family tradition or with uh, peer pressure when you're out with a group. You're just not going to fall for that because you realize what you are. You are a human being, and that's, that's not something you should, should say in shame. That's something you should say with pride. And in order to be the best human you can be, you absolutely need to eat the proper human diet. Again, if you know someone who this video would help, do not hesitate to share this video with them. You may have my permission to do that. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.